in the name of Jesus. It's life and death. There's no other way to put it. There's no way around it. No third or fourth option. It's that black and white, hot or cold, this one or that one, right or left. It really is life and death or rather, death and life. His death, your life. His life, your resurrected eternal life. The answer is that important. The answer to one question, who am I? Who do men say that I am? The world has all sorts of answers. It always has. Elijah, one of the prophets. Some moral teacher. Though he ate with and forgave freely the worst of sinners some religious guru who simply taught peace and love, though he talks about binding sins in our text. A political figure, but he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Some mythical character, like Hercules, or Thor, or even Luke Skywalker. Maybe not that last one, but it was a long time ago. But gospel writer Matthew saw a living, breathing Jesus both before and after his, his crucifixion and death, so did Peter and a whole bunch of other people. So many answers for who do men say that I am? Because it's not really that important at all to the world. But who do you say that I am? Ah, a better question, a personal one, one directed at Peter and the rest of the 11, the 12, directed at you too. Who do you say that Jesus is? Does it matter? Do you even care to answer? Is your answer different than the world's? Is your attitude different than the world's? You think it's important for you, or maybe not. Maybe just for your parents, your grandparents. Does death and life hang in the balance? Or is Jesus for you and not your friends? Jesus for your parents, your pastor, but not for you. Jesus demands an answer. He asks you the question, who do you say that I am? Death and life, transfixed, hinged, nailed down to one question. Who am I? asked Jesus. And you know what? It doesn't really matter what the world says or what you say. What really matters is what Jesus says. Jesus says what the Father says, what the Spirit 
causes Peter to confess. So who does Jesus say that he is? Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what does that mean? It means he must go to Jerusalem to suffer many things, be killed, and on the third day, rise. That's what it means to be the Christ, to be God, to be Jesus, to suffer, die, and rise. But not even that. To suffer, die, and rise for you and for the world. That's what Jesus is all about. He's the Christ, the Savior, the Son of God. He's God of God, and yet, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and that Jesus does all those things means he's the Christ, the Savior, your Savior, your Christ. It means, as he said, that forgiveness of sins should be preached in my name to you. It means that each one of you has been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, that you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit at the font. It means that your sins are loosed by your pastor. It means that you are devoted to the breaking of the bread, where you receive the body and blood of Jesus the Christ for the forgiveness of all your sins. That's what it means that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who am I? The answer is eternally important. Everything's nailed down to that one question, life and death, or rather, death and life. His death, nailed down, transfixed, crucifixed for you. Life again, too. His and yours. Yours in your baptism, in the loosing of your sins on earth and in heaven. In the breaking of the bread, Jesus' own body and blood for you. He is the Christ, your Christ, your Savior. That's what he says. And we, we just say what he says, what the Father says, and the Spirit says too. In the name of Jesus. <laughs>